We're talking NASCAR. Only three more races to go for the 2024 season. Homestead Miami Speedway is the stop this week. And what we're going to do is what we do each and every week here. We're going to break down the race. We're going to talk about the latest odds. We're going to go over the track history, uh, driver history with the track and so forth. We'll take a look at the playoff race. Odds. Anything else you want to talk about, let us know in the comments section here of the video. And don't forget to tune in on Saturday for qualifying and practice talk. That'll be after qualifying and practice on Saturday. Uh, starting lineup video, and we'll let you know what's going on post-practice and qualifying, what the odds might indicate, and exactly what uh, you might need to know uh, based on some uh, speed charts that, of course, we're not going to be privy to until then. Also, we'll have our F1 coverage coming up, and you can check out that video, which will be uh, posted a little bit later in the week. And check out CJ Radoon's fantasy reports from rotowire.com for both the NASCAR and F1 races. We'll have links in the video description area for both of those reports. How's it going, CJ? It is going well. Hard to believe we only have three more races left to go here in NASCAR. Yeah, and then another month for <laughs> F1. So, <laughs> yeah. Another five to go for, for Formula One. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we, but yeah, three more to go. And the NASCAR season will be officially over. So, uh, we've got Homestead, and 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 we're gonna have Homestead again early next year. So yeah, move into the spring next year. Unfortunately, uh, I was doing a little bit of research on that over the week, and it uh, seems like I don't know if they wanted to try or if they were just um, interested in in switching it up. I'm not sure which drove it, but the opportunity to have more of a hot race um, in the spring, uh, late spring, I guess next year uh, is kind of what they're aiming for, or at least what they're talking about, whether that's the reason for it or not. I'm not so sure. I think Miami should have two races. I think it's such a good track. Uh, why not put one in the spring and the summer? Yeah, the track does seem to be taking to this next gen car. So that's nice to see. And I agree. If the next gen car seems to be working for some of these tracks where in the past that wasn't the case, then change the schedule, bring, bring back another race. So not that Homestead Miami Speedway has ever had two races a year because they haven't. But <laughs> nope. Why not? All right. Let's uh, take a look first of all before we get into this. Uh, let's see. Let's pop in the. Actually, I got to make sure you're hooked up here so you can check out along uh, along with us here. So uh, hopefully you won't have any delay. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out the odds. Actually, the futures for the championship. And so I haven't seen them yet. So is Joey Logano going to be on top? What do you yeah, think? He's, he's going to be four to one at the worst. Do so you still think it's Kyle Larson on top? I'm guessing Logano is top. Um, well, yeah, in order that he'd have to be at least tied with Larson because of what Larson was three three point five last week, I think. Um, so, yeah, probably even with Larson at this point, three five. Okay, let's check him out. Ooh, starting to lose uh, any potential. I, I'm not going to call Carl Larson's uh, numbers a bargain in any way, shape, or form. But hey, look, he was four to one for most of the year. Now he's finally dropped under four to one to three to one. So he's the favorite. There you go. Three to one. Yes, indeed. Well, we warned everybody. And we didn't warn everybody uh, last week. Two we weeks it. ago. We, well, Multi-weeks ago. We actually, yeah, <laughs> we actually talked about this like two to three months ago when he was 21, 22 to 1, something like that, to win the championship. Yes. So we hope you took him when we uh, gave you that advice. And then you'd be sitting pretty with Joe Logano sitting there in the championship, ready to go. Who's next? Bell? Or Redick? Uh, yeah, last week it was Bell, so I'm going to say it's Bell and then Byron probably fourth. Oh, could be. Or it could be Redick. Let's see. It is Bell. Ah, Redick might be fourth. Ah, Byron, I was It is right. Byron. Yeah, Redick surprised me last week how high they had him. I think that's more realistic as to where he's been racing, though. So, so I agree with those odds. Not with Larson and Logano necessarily, but Bell and Byron for sure. 
Yeah, this is where uh, I guess Vegas believes this is what the Final Four is going to be because look at this. Tyler Reddick's 10-1. Mm -hmm. I thought he should have been there last week, to be honest with you, or maybe even two weeks ago. It was because of the road course. I think uh, he moved up a little bit and then kind of carried that through last week. But What a bargain. Denny Hamlin at 14-1 to at this stage. Is that a bargain the way he's been racing, though? Well, <laughs> maybe. But it is Denny Hamlin, so. It is Denny Hamlin. And there's a big bargain. Yeah, that but is. But then again, big... he was a big bargain last year, too. Yeah. At this time. So. Yeah, he could easily win one of the next two weeks. Wouldn't be surprised if he did. Just had a bad first race out of the gate. Uh, for whatever reason, they missed. We'll talk about it. He missed. They missed the setup, but they were behind. Um, crashed in qualifying, obviously, so I had to go to a backup car. So just long day. I, I don't think that's representative of his real chances of getting to Phoenix. Chase Elliott. Chase has been pretty quiet. He is the longest long shot of the bunch at 28 to 1. So, I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to take all four of these drivers right now and then just hope one of them wins the next two races or gets into the final four. And and you got a chance. And I can see one of these four being in the final four. Absolutely. I think I one of them will be. Yeah, you still have two two races left to go. Um, Miami, very competitive track. A lot of these drivers have been very good at Miami. Martinsville, probably every single one of those guys has won at Martinsville. Maybe Reddick is the only one that hasn't. But yeah, I think you got two weeks to be able to have those pay off and they can shift in, in an instant. Yeah, and, and, and again, just putting a wrap on what happened last week. So uh, another crazy situation Um and, and, and look, Logano was one of our picks last week. Uh, and he had to be, you know, it's just karma is the way it is. And it's just working out for him right now. And it wasn't just the fact, I mean, just, look, I had Christopher Bell as my top choice. And I was just feeling pretty good. I even had Bowman, of course. We had him as a long shot and sitting pretty there with, you had Byron as your top. We had Byron, Bowman, and Bell with the top three late in the race. Figured, oh, we got it sitting pretty. One of these streets, it's just one of these two drivers going to win. The only way they don't win is something weird happens. And then yep. something weird happened. It happened. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the whole gas mileage deal uh, came back to. And look, see, this is why we talk about it all the time. And I don't care what anybody says. And I know Christopher Bell's upset, but Christopher, you know, and I'm not saying anything negative about your cruise chief. You just, it's, I'm not, nothing negative there, but you don't have Paul Wolf. Yep. So we've we've been talking about Paul Wolf for years. The guy is the best strategist in NASCAR. No matter how bad the car is, whoever's driving for him is always going to have a chance because he makes the right calls on the setups when you have to make adjustments. And he makes the best calls on strategy. He's one I would love to go back. Would love to go back and find his history and just count how many races he won through pure strategy alone. Uh Sunday at um uh Sunday at Las Vegas was just another one of those examples and absolutely unsurprising that it came from Paul Wolf. Yep. So uh and really look, Joe Logano, uh championship driver, uh one of the best drivers uh in the series. He's not having a great year. Uh I think anybody uh in the top twenty could have been driving on Sunday and would have won the race. That was all Paul Wolf. So um okay. Now uh, we are going to take a look at what's going on this week with the odds. And we have, uh, look, we're, we're back at it again with Kyle Larson as <laughs> the double, the favorite by double the points. I hope you learned, uh, by now, we, we hope that you have learned a lesson this year. I don't know how many times we've talked about it. And I'm not sure we lost any this year where a driver was a heavy favorite in one. I just don't. Um, now favorites of course have won, but, uh, and, and, and what'll happen is, is normally, except for Van Gisbergen, who, whose odds went absolutely ballistically low on race day. Most of the time, the odds are at its, at its widest in the middle of the week. Then they'll shrink up. Uh, usually a driver or two will, will make it closer after qualifying and practice. And most of the time when we're talking about it on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, cause we're recording this week on a Wednesday, that any driver who's a heavy favorite by double the points just they don't win it's just the way that it is 
And uh, especially, and look, if one of them won this year, well, you know, you, you tell me about those odds of one for 33 or one for 34, whatever it is. Not very good. So we'll get into why Larson's a favorite, but he's just not worth it at three to one. Uh, and then we can kind of, uh, let's actually, yeah, let's, let's go to one more driver here, and that's Byron. So let's go with these top four. These are the four favorites of the race. So you got Reddick, Bell, and Byron behind them. And we can understand why all of these four drivers are the clear favorite four. Look, Larson had to win just a couple of years ago where he, uh, where he led 199 laps. Actually finished fourth in the most recent Darlington race, which is the only track we're going to talk about as a similar handicapping track that relates to Homestead. He led 263 laps at the race at Darlington just a few weeks ago. So there's that. And it's Kyle Larson. Reddick uh, led 174 laps. I think it was in May at Darlington. Came back 10th uh, last time out. And he has two Xfinity Series wins here at Homestead out of four, which is very impressive. And in four races at Homestead, if you take a look at the one that he crashed and didn't finish or whatever get that out of the picture the other three when he finished he all finished in the top five but this is also important he's only led four four laps okay keep that in mind just four laps and four races bell meanwhile led 26 laps when he won the race last year he's the defending champ coming off a third place finish at darlington not too long ago byron meanwhile had a sixth place finish earlier this year at darlington has a win here that was in 2021 when he uh, won the race from the 31st position. So, uh, and Byron, meanwhile, also has finished fourth last year, led 25 laps, 12th from the pole in 2022, led 32 laps and led 102 laps in his win in 2021. So again, that's why these four should be the favorites. But based on the way the season's going, I'm eliminating Larson because he's the too heavy of a favorite. And I'm just going to, if I'm taking just these four, it, it, to me, it's got to be Bell and Byron. Yeah, and I would put Byron ahead of Bell um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, Bell won this race last year. And I think probably Kyle Larson is the only one so far this year that's won <clears throat> uh, year to year. Um, I'm not sure it counts because it's in, you know, we're not talking about a race in the same year. Um, which has not been done this season, but it, it, it's really those laps led for me. So Byron, last three three races, his his win, his 12th place finish, and his fourth place finish, 102 laps, 32 laps, and 25 laps led, exactly as you said. So if I'm looking at uh, Larson, who's the only other one that can compare in that laps led category over recent races here at Homestead, if I can get Byron for two to one, plus the fact that Byron's just been a top four, top three kind of machine over the last, I don't know, five or six weeks. There's no reason why I wouldn't take him this week. I think he's one of your final four. I think he's going to get there through a win, and it very well could come this week at Homestead. So of that bunch, you know, Larson and Byron stand out. Larson, you know, like you said, too, too heavy of a favorite. Reddick and Bell, just not enough consistency with laps led. Uh, Byron's got that, though. So Byron's my choice of the four. Yeah, Reddick has not gotten out of this, uh, you know, not slump, but he hasn't had a top five since his Michigan win. Yep. So it's been. that's just not where I want to be going with right now. And you know what? If you're going to take Reddick, you might as well take him at 10 to 1 to win the championship. Exactly right. Because you get the better odds. If you think he's going to win this race, well, he's going to be in the championship. And then he'll get his mojo back. So that's what I would do. But Bell and Byron are just too hot right now. And then just like you said, and we've done this before, it's about two for one. So would you rather have Larson at three to one or get Bell and Byron two for the price of one? Okay, because that's what you're getting. You're getting a six to one and a seven to one driver. If you put a hundred bucks, just using a number, on Larson, you, you make $330. But if you put a hundred bucks on Bell and, and uh, if we put 50 bucks, excuse me, on Bell and Byron, you're basically making the same amount. And you get two drivers for the price of one. So 350. Yep. There you go. Yep. 350 for Byron and 300 for Bell. So, yep. and then Bell, looking at his results since Daytona, he has finished in the top 10 in all of his races except Watkins Glen, the road course. And he has six top fives with back to back runner up finishes coming in. Byron, 
fourth, third, third, and second in his last four races. So that's our strategy there. Let's move on to the next uh, group. You got Blaney, you got Hamlin, and you got Elliott and Truex. So let's see. And yeah, let's let's just go with those. Let's just well, yeah, let's put, we can pop in Chastain. All right. So Blaney and Hamlin, uh, out of this group, I'd just go with those two if I'm taking them. So <laughs> Blaney uh, is now he's ten to one, and I, that's the only thing I'm I'm not. See, this thing, Blaney is 22 to 1 to win the championship, and he's 10 to 1 to win the race. Come on. I mean, this is definitely different. This is, we just talked about the Reddick deal. So if you're going to have that strategy, well, why would I put money on Ryan Blaney at 10 to 1 when, when I'm going to, if I, because if I'm going to do that, I'll, I'll put the 22 to 1 to win the championship. Uh, same reason. If he wins, he's in, and we know how good Blaney is at phoenix so that would be the strategy there hamlin not so much it's 14 to 1 it's sort of like reddick but the same thing because so i i'd probably do it that way but if you're just gonna go with the race that's the thing i just i don't like these guys at 10 to 1 i wish they were more like 12 14 to 1 that kind of thing and maybe that's what you'll what you'll get on on sunday after qualifying and practice but uh blaney runner up last year led 53 laps has another top five, led 70 laps, 2020. Uh, very good in the Xfinity Series as well here in four races. Not so good at Darlington, so keep that in mind this year. Hamlin, meanwhile, has led, um, let's see. No, here's the thing with Hamlin, if you want to take a look at his career. Very good career. Got three wins, okay? Six poles, very impressive, even though he only has one win from the pole out of the six that was in 2020 last year led 31 laps before he wrecked very strange stat is is that denny hamlin has raced here 19 times three wins those are his only three top fives in his last 15 races at homestead so if denny hamlin is is in the top five he's winning if he's not it's not a good it's not it's not that impressive of a result so that's the strange thing. And then Hamlin, of course, as we just mentioned, is not exactly on fire right now. You take a look at how things are going. But it's okay. It's better than Reddick. I mean, he has five top, excuse me, four top fives in his last five. Nothing worse than 14th at the Roval. Does have a top five at Bristol during the stretch. So it's been okay. It's just not as anywhere near as good as he was early in the season. He was on fire early this season. So it's not the same Denny Hammond, but he's been okay. That's why I think 14-1 to with the championship is, is just, you know, maybe it's not that bad of an idea um, overall. But, and, and again, I'd rather take that than to 10-1 to to win this race. Uh, anyway, yeah. So I'm pretty much going to stop there at, the, at these two drivers. Uh, by the way, Hamlin was fourth and seventh at Darlington this year. So that's good too. Because I just, I just thought Elliot's never done anything here. Truex, well, you know the story there. Uh, and Truen, uh, Chastain in the same boat. He's got his win this year. Uh, so I don't think we're, we're going to see that again. Yeah, it's interesting about this group. Um, Chastain, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, we talk about his ability to be good at tracks that he's just good at. I'm not sure that this is one of them. He has one second place finish. The rest of his finishes were 17th or worse. His average finish is 23.6. But the thing that's interesting to me most about, about this group is Hamlin, Elliott, and Truex. If you look at their careers at this track, and all of them have over five races, um, Hamlin, like you said, is uh, is like 19 races or something. They're all right around like 10th. 10 point something Hamlin's been longer. Um, so his, his drops to 16.1, but if you look at Elliot, Elliot and Truex are like 10.7, 10.4 thereabouts. Um, and that's kind of where I would expect both of them to finish this week. Anyway, that's kind of the way that they've been running. Like even when Truex has a really good week, that's about as good as he can do. He's not up front. He's not leading laps. He's not fighting inside the top five. So I'm not sure that I'd even put him at 16 to one here. I wouldn't definitely put Chastain at 17 to one. So you're really looking at Blaney and Hamlin here. 
And exactly as you said, and we talked about a little bit earlier, Hamlin is not on fire. Uh, he just doesn't seem to be as hot as he was earlier in the season. I think he may have peaked too early. He's still got a couple of weeks to turn it around to bring it back. But Ryan Blaney, like we talked about when we were looking at the futures, I mean, he's a guy that could easily win one of these next two weeks. And I would expect him, almost expect him to be in the, that final four at Phoenix. So why not this week at Homestead, where he started 10th, I think, and finished second last year and led 53 laps. So uh, he's got another third place finish back at this track back in 2020. So he knows how to get it, get the job done here. And, you know, Logano's win last week rises all ships in the Penske shop. So maybe this is Ryan Blaney's week. All right. Let's move on. And we've got this. Uh, so you got Joey Logano there. So you can forget about him winning again this week. That's not happening. Uh, and uh, then you've got Kyle. Uh, and Kyle, uh, interesting. He has, going into last year, he had 10 top 10s in his last 11. Um, but then that streak came to an end when he finished 18th last year, or that run, because... Well, he was driving a Chevy. All that other stuff, good stuff, was with the Toyota. That's, that was just him. Because if you take a look at the overall manufacturer stats, um, Toyota and Chevy kind of equal the last several years. I mean, Toyota has won six of the last 11, including Bell's win last year. Chevy, meanwhile, won the previous two, so they won two out of three. Ford is the one that's the problem. Ford has uh, no wins in the last five and only one out of the last 13. That was Logano's uh, championship win. That was the, yeah, championship win, I believe. Mm -hmm. So um, keep this in mind, too. There have been eight different winners at Homestead the last eight years. All right? So if you haven't won at Homestead either ever or in the last eight years, maybe you got something going. Uh, and as far as starting position, only two of the last third, uh, excuse me, two of the last three winners actually started outside the top six rows. So qualifying is not going to matter as much as normal. Those starting positions were 13th and 31st, as we mentioned with Byron. And only one pole sitter has won the last 22, 21 races at Homestead. One. That was Denny Hamlin. In 2020, as I mentioned, his one out of six. So, by the way, the championship race ended in 2019. So, if you want to look at 2020, the last four races, it's a different strategy. It's a different setup because we all know when they were championship racing, there was only three or four drivers that could win. So, just keep that in mind when you're going over your stats and your your uh, analysis. So, anyway, Kyle Busch getting on Kyle. He's the only other driver. He's the last driver to win two races. So he won it in 19 and 2015. Otherwise, that streak is, is eight straight. And Kyle has those two wins, but he's only had two laps led in the last four. Second at Darlington, and you're getting 18 to one. Uh, Gibbs, you know, we've been forgetting about Gibbs for a while now, and he disappointed again. He looked like he was pretty good early last week, and then he crashes or ends up spinning out, whatever. Kozlowski, forget him. He doesn't have a good resume here, even though he won Darlington in May. Bubba on this board, though, if I'm taking a, a couple of drivers, I, I'd think about Kyle, but I'd also maybe think about Bubba because his best finish was actually last year when he finished sixth from the second position. So he had a good qualifying effort, sixth overall, and... He was seventh at Darlington earlier this year, came back to lead 37 laps just a few weeks ago at Darlington. So I think Wallace, and you know, if you're driving from Michael Jordan, there's no such thing as giving up. So uh, Bubba will be out there to try to win. That's definite. And you're getting 28 to one. So out of that group, I'd, I'd, I'd think about Kyle and I definitely put a couple of bucks on Wallace as a long shot. Yeah, I agree with you. Logano, we've got to throw out just because nobody's won back to back this year. He's not going to do it. It's not going to change this week. I don't see any reason why it would. Kyle Busch is interesting. I would consider him. Um, he last week was, you know, a disappointment for several reasons, but past couple of weeks of actually he's, he's tailed off a little bit. Uh, but he does still have the speed that um, he started to pick up as the season approached the playoffs. So Kyle Busch is still out there hunting for wins. He's a two-time winner here. So 
don't discount that. Ty Gibbs, I'm not going to bother with until he starts showing something that makes me question that, which he has not yet all season. Brad Keselowski, like you said, never won at this track. He doesn't have a good resume. His average finish actually is a 14.5, which isn't bad, uh, but it's only because he's got four top fives in there. Best finish was a third place finish, which I think he did twice. So nothing really outstanding there that would make him stand out. But like you said, Bubba Wallace certainly does stand out to me. And it's not a result of his average finish, which is 19.2 over five races here at Homestead. But it's the fact that he got out front and led laps in both of the last two. So in 2021, he figured out starting from the 19th position, how to work his way forward and lead some laps. And then he backed that up in 2023 when he started on the front row, ended up finishing six, but ended up leading nine laps by the end of the day. So I think Wallace is a better choice in my mind than his teammate this week. And I wouldn't put Wallace, um, you know, any further back. I, I would take him, you know, now. And in fact, I'd obviously also put him in my fantasy roster too. I think he's going to be one that's kind of that mid price driver. Uh, I would go ahead and slot him in because I think he's going to get out and lead laps, probably qualify in the top 10. And like you said, driving for Michael Jordan, he wants to prove himself and he's going to be trying to do that these next three races. All right. And then uh, we take a look at the, the rest of the long shot field. Uh, Bowman, AJ, Briscoe, uh, Gregson, and Dylan. Maybe even Hosevar, but d- those are the those are the interesting ones. I mean, Bowman. I know he's never done much here, but he has had two top tens in the last four races. Eighth at Darlington, out of out of the two. Um, if he qualifies well, though, okay. If you want to wait, it's up to you. I'm going to put money on him now anyway because the guy is just driving his head off. And that's why we liked him last week. And he was a long shot and he outdid the number again. And he's just, he just keeps out doing the number. And so, uh, but if you want to wait, keep in mind, he's never qualified better than eighth. So if he qualifies strong and has a good practice session, then feel that much better about Bowman's chances. You might have to give up half the points though. Uh, AJ uh, wishes Homestead was on the, the uh, circuit every week. Because this is like, I don't think there's a better track for AJ outside of road courses than Homestead. That's why it's like, what was AJ doing in this race? I mean, we only see him nowadays in the road course. Well, that's because he's finished fifth and third the last two years at Homestead. Even finished fifth from the 25th position. Briscoe, meanwhile, has an Xfinity win in 2020 and is coming off the win at Darlington. So that's uh, why he's interesting at 55 to 1. Uh, Gregson is interesting because only the fact that he's been very strong in the Xfinity series at this track. Four top fives when he's finished four times. He has a rack in there. So if he finishes, he's in the top five every time with a win in 2022, leading 127 laps. And Dylan might be a must play for a buck as well because even though he only has one top five out of 10, and never let a lap in the Cup Series. He's been 12th or better in his last eight. So he's a really good fantasy play this week. Nice little obscure, you know, long shot driver fantasy play. Austin Dillon, 12th or better, last eight at Homestead. That includes four top tens and a fourth in 2022. And he also, in four Xfinity Series races at Homestead, has three top fives and a runner up. So I think Dillon is a buck. I think Gregson may be a buck. I don't know. Maybe put 50 cents on him. Uh, Briscoe's worth a buck, AJ's worth a buck, and Bowman is definitely worth uh, more than that. Sort of like I'm going to treat Bowman like Wallace, like the two best long shots in the field. Yeah, I agree with you on Bowman. I think uh, just based on how he's been racing at another good race or good week last week, uh, despite getting disqualified, otherwise he'd, he'd be well in the fight uh, to make it to Phoenix. Um, so I think Bowman's got it going on, plus he's got something to prove. AJ Allmendinger, like you said, Um, has been very good at this track. Um, He is into the Final Four in the Xfinity series, so he can probably relax a little bit this week and maybe focus on another top five here in the Cup Series. Chris Buescher's done nothing uh, here, so kind of throw him out. But um, the other one that you did not mention, actually, and he did pretty well last week as a result of the fuel saving strategy is also Daniel Suarez. And I say that because of a fantasy perspective, not necessarily as a 
a betting perspective, but he's going to be relatively down there on the price list for fantasy rosters as well. And he's been getting better at this track. His last three finishes were 15th, 10th, and 16th. So if he can walk away with the top 15 in the middle, in the middle part, middle to bottom part of a fantasy roster for a cheap price, I think that's a, a good way to go as well. But certainly of that bunch, uh, Bowman is my uh, top choice of the bunch. And then I'd probably go a little bit longer with uh, AJ Allmendinger, like you said. All right. It's time to give our picks. Who are you going to go with? I'm taking Byron as my top choice. All right. Well, then you know I'm going to go ahead and take Bell. So <laughs> those are the two we're going to split up. By- we did that last week. And we it should have worked. <laughs> it should have. We were close. Yeah. Uh, right, um, for, let's say, middle. Hmm. I'll I'll take Wallace as my middle guy. Oh. That means you're taking a deep long shot, huh? That means for a deep Not one, really, but... I will. Yeah, deep one, I'll go ahead and take a Bowman. So you'll take two long shots for the price of uh, one middle guy. You got it. All right, I like that Wallace and Bowman. All right, so I tell you what, since you do that, I'll do uh, I'll do Blaney. I'll I'll, I'll put Blaney in there. Since we have two long shots, because I'm going to add another long shot here as well. And I will go, let's see, it's going to be, let's say again, I think the top long, long shots are Dylan, well, Prisco and AJ. I still kind of consider them long, long shots. Um, I'm still surprised they're not like 65 or 75, to tell you the (laughs) truth. Maybe they will be at the end. But you know what? I'll go ahead and uh, and, uh, let me take... uh, Dylan. That's a good choice. Because maybe he's due one after what happened earlier this year. So, all right. Anyway, you know the whole deal. Uh, You got it there. And be with us next week. Uh, Well, first of all, you're going to be with us on Saturday uh, when, or be with me on Saturday when I go over qualifying uh, practice reports. Um, Last week, it was unusual because it was a West Coast race. So we weren't on till late on Saturday, uh, which uh, was a bummer. So we uh, anticipate we are going to be, though, uh, on a lot earlier this week. So uh, we're, we're pro- I'm guessing it's going to be like around 3.30, 4 o'clock. I think that's kind of been the way they've been going. Again, they're not giving me any Saturday uh, info, but I'm just going to guess it's going to be like 2.30 to 3.30-ish. So we should be on the air no later than 4, 4.30 with a recording of the how qualifying went, practice went, updated odds, and just overall analysis on what to look forward to 24 hours from then. And, uh, or, yeah, right around then. So that's coming up next week, too, either Tuesday or Wednesday, hopefully Tuesday. We, we wrap up the regular season uh, with Martinsville, correct? That is correct, Martinsville, before we head on off to Phoenix for the finale. And Martinsville, uh, who won Martinsville earlier this year? That was William Byron. So there you go. That's probably not a good thing for William. So he better not need to win that race, but he probably doesn't. Yeah, get it done this week. (laughs) Yeah, he said, "Is it who's who could who's probably going to win their way in this week?" With I mean, without winning, but get get to the playoff, the the final four. Who do you think can do that this week? Is it possible that anybody could do it this week? Yeah, I think uh, both Bell and Larson are far enough ahead. Byron's not even that far behind those two, but Bell's at the top of the point standings. He's uh, 42 points ahead of Hamlin. Uh, So if he maintains that, that's about a race. He should be able to work his way in if he gets stage points and finishes up near the front. Maybe even if one of the bottom four guys has some more trouble, uh, Bell may be locking himself in pretty early, if not within the first couple laps there at Martinsville. And keep in mind, both Bell and Larson, they're going to go into this race almost like teammates because if, if, if they don't win, they want the other guy to win because mm-hmm. they already know that that guy is more than likely going to sew up a spot and they don't want someone else stealing the spot because that works against them. So, uh, yeah, that, that, but it does look like Bell, Larson, unless of course we have something uh go on here but even if bell and larson qualify uh and but if they don't win then one of them might be sweating it out anyway next week so 
You got to you got you got to get in. You got to you know there could be three winners and then it only leaves one spot for points. So that is exactly right. Yeah, that's why another reason why you want to get it done this week. Plus um, next week at Martinsville, uh, short track, easy to get bumped out of the way. Whether you've got a fast car or not, you're always going to be in contention to get a bump. So. This is a week where if you've got the speed, you have to capitalize on it to make yourself, um, you know, locked into that finale at Phoenix and hopefully through a win. Uh, but Christopher Bell is going to be doing everything he can to put himself in position to get there on points, even if he can't win. But I think he stands a good chance of winning anyway. So. Yeah. And and um, again, that's the whole reason why I actually this is the part I kind of like about just the way that it's set up. I mean, I'm not you can't. It's set up the way it is, the playoff structure. So what I like about the way the setup, the playoff stru- setup is, is that you do in this last round, Bell or Larson, both of them may, one of them may have to win to get in. Now maybe they get in, you know, because the other people, the other drivers are going to be rooting for are going to be twenty other drivers who have been eliminated already, because that helps them. So. They're just looking for someone else to win that's out of it or one of them to win. They just don't want any of the drivers that are, you know, Logano. Hey, Logano, you can win too. But anybody else, the other five drivers, they don't want them to win because it would put pressure on them to possibly. And look, that, that's I think that is the way it should be. I know uh, others still, even the way the system is, might think otherwise. Um, I don't know about you. I don't know if you think that Larson and Bell – if they're so far ahead in points in the playoffs deserve to be, or whether they should just add a driver and make it, Hey, you know what? They got some, I mean, you you can't knock Larson or bell out. Look at their points. Look how high their points are. You know, we just have five drivers in this, this year. It would be really wild if you've got Kyle Larson out there, who's won twice as many races as his closest competitor, not be in the championship finale because something fluky happened in these last two races, yeah. which is entirely possible. Like you said, say Bell wins this weekend. Larson darn well better be, you know, winning stages and going for the race win at Martinsville because uh, if something happens to him this week at Homestead, he's going to be he's going to be scrambling. And then you've got somebody again who's won so many races this season. Uh, and yeah, he's had an up and down season, but twice as many wins in a format where they advertise it as a must win format. Like we want our championship to be a winner. Larson's your winner this year. If he doesn't even make it to the finale, I think that says something about the flaws within the system. Uh, but it definitely wouldn't be a good look for NASCAR overall. But chances are that it's, pr- it's a little remote because of how far away he is remote. and the yeah, fact. he's only seven, point, seven points behind Bell and uh, 35 ahead of Hamlin, who's the first person out. So, yeah. like, I, th- I think Bell and Larson stand a good chance of putting themselves in a really good position if they have good good race, uh, good stages and a good race finish here at Homestead, put themselves in a really good position not to have to sweat out Martinsville. Uh, but, you know, it'd be, it'd be a heck of a lot easier if one of them won. Certainly. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> they would like the other one or the other to win. Yes. Yeah. That would make life a lot easier for them. All right, so that's it. We'll see you again here next Tuesday or Wednesday when we preview Martinsville, the last regular season race in NASCAR. Uh, So uh, thanks for tuning in. If you're interested in our F1 coverage, you can check that out. Uh, That video will be uh, published uh, in the next uh, couple of days. So check, look out for that. Uh, Possibly on Friday, because I believe that's when you have your fantasy report ready to go. Uh, So we'll probably post it on the same day uh, and uh, we'll see you guys again next week.